Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can take some cheap Apple Barrel paints from Walmart and some cheap 99 cent yarn from Walmart and turn it into a cool string art print for a little under $5. First things first, I have taken just a small amount of paint and squirted it into this cup. As you'll notice, it's a little on the thicker side, so I've added a little bit of water to it. And this is instead of paint thinner, which I imagine most people would be using in this situation, but water for the most part comes right out of the tap and is really quite inexpensive. So I'm just gonna be stirring up this color here, this is a dark green. I believe this one is called Mountain Green by Apple Barrel. I'm just gonna keep it going until I'm pretty sure that all that chunky bits of paint have been removed from the bottom. And because it's somewhat watered down, I'm not gonna worry too much about washing off the back of this paintbrush. I'm just gonna keep stirring. This is a deeper green, more of a muted green. I believe this one is called a Marsh Green from Apple Barrel. This one I think was probably my wateriest, so it didn't need as much water. And finally, I'm just going for a light gray that I believe is called pewter gray. So just scrape along the sides and along the bottom, much like you would if you were stirring up a brownie mix or cookie batter. And just make sure everything is really smooth and you don't have any paint chunks floating around in your paint. Next, I'm taking this yarn. I got this for 99 cents from Walmart a while back, and I'm just gonna be cutting it to a semi-long length, but not too long. I don't want there to be too much color. I definitely want there to be a nice contrast. So I've cut all three pieces of string to the same size, and I'm just gonna be going one by one and dunking it into the paint. I've started off here by using gloves. Uh, this is not a necessary step, but if you wanna keep yourself clean, I think it works really well. So I'm just sticking my hands in here, dunking in, and just leaving a nice little dry portion at the top for which I can pull the string and create the effect and I'm just squeezing and dragging to make sure that all of the extra water and paint color has come off and it's just not dripping or sopping wet, it just has enough color. And then you're gonna wanna take it and just lay it over your paper in any pattern you want. This string is a little on the angular side on this first run through because it was wrapped around that um, I guess cardboard bit. Um, I think it actually turns out pretty cool with some of the bends in it and definitely more of a unique look. If you wanted to get a look like this you could easily take a flat iron or even a curling iron to create some sort of um, natural curl or wave or kink inside the yarn to create this effect if yours is not already laying out like that. So I took that mountain green first and now I'm moving on to this pewter gray and I'm going to lay it over top in a different direction. You can choose to have them overlap each other or not overlap at all. I went for an overlapping look here. This is actually the first time I tried anything like this and I actually really ended up liking the way that this turned out. I made sure to leave just those little bits of unpainted string out on the edges because that's what we're gonna be using to pull it out from underneath a second sheet of paper. Now I'm moving on to our last one, which is this marsh green, and I am dumping it in, making sure that the string is entirely coated. Pinch and squeeze once more, once you're pretty sure it is completely covered. Try not to make as much of a mess that I've made. As I said, this one was my wateriest, so it definitely, I could have added a little less water, I think. But once everything's moved out of the way, I will be placing that string and sending it off in a different direction from the other two, just to kind of create a little bit of a different effect. And now I think I'm just gonna take off my gloves so that I don't get any unwanted pigment anywhere, or really, pigment anywhere I don't want it. We definitely want pigment. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take another sheet of paper and I got these just from a really inexpensive drawing pad that I've had for a hot minute kind of hanging around. I'm pretty sure it was a cheap like $2 thing that I got from either Walmart or Hobby Lobby at some point. 
I have taken the Norton Shakespeare Anthology, which is a big, big, thick book, so that the strings don't move around and kind of keep their shape while I'm pulling. I'm just gonna set a very light hand on top because if you push too hard, it's gonna be extremely difficult to pull these strings out. And I'm just gonna go one by one, dropping them back into their cups from whence they came. And take everything out piece by piece. Now you're definitely gonna want a thicker paper for this. You can try it with copy paper. It's just probably gonna be a little bit more difficult and you might ruin whatever book it is that you're setting on top of it because the paint might bleed. So I would definitely recommend trying to get a thicker, at least drawing paper. This is acrylic paint that I mixed with this water so it dries pretty quickly, um, but that definitely doesn't mean it can't bleed if it gets a little too wet. If holding down your book isn't working so hot, you can definitely set your hand on the paper on the side somewhere where there is no string and pull out. You could see a couple times here it was a really difficult actually to pull those strings out, but uh, just keep yanking and I promise you, you'll be pleased with the result. As you can see here, we had some of that bleeding. Luckily, none of it made it onto the book. And here is what my first piece of string art looks like. As you can see, it's kind of made the where it uh, pulled out, it's made these neat little, I don't even know what to call them, it just kind of looks like a translucent sort of fabric almost, and uh, the angles I think really make this one super unique. So I'm going to try this again now that my string has kind of loosened up a bit, it's not so kinky. I wanted to see how it would look with some less angular and some softer pulls, I suppose, and shapes. So I'm just taking that glove, though it's not on my hand anymore, and rubbing it down. Definitely wouldn't recommend doing this with a paper towel or a tissue or something because I think it might soak up too much of the pigment. Either use your bare fingers or something plastic like this. And once again, we are making a mess. I'm going color by color and kind of going for these more S-like shapes. They're definitely overlapping a little less as well. Finally, we have mountain green. I think I'm taking a little too much time to decide exactly where I want everything, uh, but I think I decided I was happy at this point. Um, you could also decide to kind of paint a background color on this and add in some thicker paint. Um, I actually was inspired to do this because I saw Jenna Marbles had done it a while ago, but I wanted to come up with a cheaper and frankly a little less messy way to do it, especially if you're like me and you're in a rental space and you don't really want to be getting paint all over your furniture or your carpet or your cats, whatever the case may be. I definitely think the string pulls out a little easier if you're not holding onto the book and you're holding on to the paper. So long as you're not pressing into the string and making it almost impossible to yank out, um, it will come out pretty naturally and pretty easily. Rotating this around to make sure I get an easy pull, trying very hard not to knock anything over. Grabbing lightly and yanking. If your book is heavy enough, you shouldn't need to hold it down on the top, and that's something I think I learned from this, um, and I shouldn't be trying to make it too difficult for myself here. Here is what my second piece looks like. The Grand Reveal. So this one kind of turned out, I think the aesthetic is very, very different. Um, I definitely think I like the first one a little bit better, but I think what's really interesting about this one is that you really got more of a color blend here and I think that might have come just with um, perhaps letting the water out a little bit more but overall I think 
Each of these turned out very unique and very pretty, and I would definitely like to try to go in and kind of create those kinks again to make some really unique string artwork that I think might not be super common all over. Um, these would be really beautiful paired next to each other and framed up uh, to kind of look like matching prints. I put them in these green colors just to kind of go with some of the plant themes I had going on in my classroom or even at home, just because we don't have a whole lot of decorating done still. Um, I like that each piece is a little, something a little bit different and something a little unique and you can do this with so many different color combinations and create really simple and abstract art that is totally beautiful for your home or classroom or whatever it is that you want to be doing as well as being generally a pretty fun weekend or evening activity um, for yourself, your kids or just you know maybe a girls night whatever it may be. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you next week on Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another video. Thanks again, and see you next time. Bye.